Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of how I built this anaconda. And basically, it's a very straightforward build. The only few things that I want to show you are things like this, like the reinforcements I put um, using some of the uh, Scotch 3M Extreme Tape. And in the uh, trailing edges, this reinforced tape is a little bit thinner. This one just has um, the parallel strands of fiberglass running through them. I also reinforce the wing tips because these tips um, tend to see abuse. And so I just put this there to reinforce those a little bit. So very basic setup, didn't do anything special. I'm just gonna quickly show you, this is where my batteries go. These are two 6S 5000 milliamp hour batteries. It requires this amount of battery to be able to balance. And uh, I'll show you the balance points. This is one of the antennas for the uh, radio receiver. I'll show you the receiver that I'm using here. Basically, <clears throat> I took a um, Crossfire receiver. This is a full-size eight-channel PWM receiver. And I'm going to mount that a little bit more securely at a later point, but for now, I've just been pushing this to the back of the of the fuselage cavity. As you can see, there's a lot of space there. And <clears throat> I'll actually tell you the reason why this ESC right now is disconnected from the motor, but um, the standard motor that Radiomate RC provided me with my 6S setup wasn't really up to the task. And I'll show you the motor and I'll show you what happened, but long story short is that it burned out. I ran the numbers through eCalc, obviously after the fact, but basically eCalc says that the motor is gonna overheat, and sure enough, it did. When I did a flight where I was keeping throttle 75% to 100%, after a few minutes, it actually burned out. So that was too bad, I was kind of flying around and trying to get the feel for the characteristics of the plane. Just, you know, the flight envelope in high throttle settings and it didn't, it didn't uh, last the duration of the flight. So <clears throat> let me show you real quick what I did. For now, I just got that one screw holding things in place to show you. But the wings, actually the tail comes off. Uh, once these screws are loosened up here, there's two two and a half millimeter hex that go in there. So right now I have them loose because I just put it together uh, for the video. But basically just by gently <clears throat> pushing the tail back and you do have to go like one side at a time and just kind of pull it out evenly. There we go. So that's the way it comes out. Now, <clears throat> The servos that came with the kit are installed here. There's the wing joiner. I also put some of that extreme tape here and um, the fiberglass reinforced tape in the back. But look at these servo lines. They basically barely came out. So I had to use an extension that I had too much wire because these plug in at the end of the tail booms right there. So I can get the camera to focus on there. And what I did is I just put a little mark in black where the ground is, so that side. So that way I know that when I come to connect it, I take the servo wire and I connect ground to ground, like so. There's the signal and the ground will go towards the side of the ground where I put the black mark. Okay, so that's basically that. That's the tail. Like I said, not a whole lot done to the tail. So then, <clears throat> for now, these things come out. And the reason I have this blue tape here is that I still haven't quite glued these together or sealed them up. So for now, I just put some of that painter's tape to hold them in place. These booms come with this flat mounting area for either a GPS or a receiver. And so, I haven't yet decided exactly how I'm going to do it, but in case I want to run any wires through there, I haven't closed this up, or I haven't permanently glued it together, so I'm just going to remove them for now. And here are those two with the tail. Okay, so the next step is, uh, of course, you would have it with all four bolts. I've just kind of loosely 
install this bolt for now. Let me put it aside. And then the wing comes off like so. <clears throat> These are not plugged in right now. Again, just for the video. But the way that I've coated these, I took a page out of the book from uh, Two Brothers RC. So basically the way that this would work is, oh well, there's the wing. Here's the receiver. And what I did is, I of course connected all the different leads here. These are all servo extensions. And as you can see, I used red for the left wing, green for the right wing. And then I put just zip ties, one, two, and three, on both sides. And these match up to the wing connectors. So the wing connectors also have one, two, and three in red and green. So that lets me have a little bit of an easier time and reduce mistakes when putting it together. So I'll show you the, the wing and specifically these booms. So, <clears throat> these are the connectors that come with the kit. I read online, uh, not everybody's happy with them. What I did is that I epoxied the ends in there, and this back part is also epoxied in there, so that when I go to connect things, they won't get pushed in, and when I pull them out, they also come out. So, so far, they're, they're, they've been working. I've assembled the plane maybe, you know, 10 times or so. And so far they're working so those go in there and connect so hopefully they will continue to hold up and continue to use them the wing comes apart like so just pull it apart and then let's see there's one wing i'll put it over here as well and here's the other wing I'll put the two spars with the booms, and there's the wing. So I did want to show you real quick that I use that extreme tape also over this part of the wing. This is where the main piece that receives the spar goes into. I haven't permanently attached these either, but those are all the brackets. And here you can see the uh, the plug that receives the tail boom. So if I take one of the tail booms here, this is the way that it goes in. Goes in through there, through here, and then it's gonna plug in there, like so. And I made it so that it's recessed just ever so slightly, and then I can hear it. There we go. So when I hear that, I know that this is connected and it's gone in all the way. So every now and then I've had to make sure that they're in all the way and that I twist them a little bit, ensure there's good contact because otherwise when I went to plug in the servo, I wasn't getting good contact. So that's one thing, you gotta push it in all the way, make sure these are tight before you go to attach the tail. Um, <clears throat> so let's have a look at the wing. Uh, here are the servo installations. This is the servo for the flaps. And as you can see, the flaps are relatively small, just that size, but they got this big slat at the front of the wing. And so the way you install them is when these are basically uh, uh, in the neutral position, the servo looks like that. See how it's got kind of like that 45 degree? And they attach over here, and what I did is I glued them in um, I think I used hot glue, and that's holding really well. What I did is I sanded the horn, and I made sure and wiped everything with alcohol, then cut the slot, put it in there, kind of test fit everything, and then glue it. Same here for this side. Now, in the front of the uh, slat, it barely even starts protruding, but in the back, I did put that backing plate, and then I put glue all around that. Then uh, I may trim that off a little bit, but for now I left it on there. I'd rather have a more secure connection than not. So that's the way that those work. Um, again, extreme tape. Everywhere I put those covers for the spars. There's two spars here. And then the main 
spar over on this side. It goes all the way. I put a little bit of a, a servo horn screw just to indicate the CG. It is just slightly behind the main spar. You can put it on the spar for the maiden and then for um, normal use just behind the spar. Here's the aileron servo. And then what I did is I inserted a couple of hard point attachments for a Roncan Thumb Pro. And um, what I did is I 3D printed a little bracket and sunk that into the wing. So it's actually fairly, uh, fairly strong and sturdy there. Let me see if I can show you what that looks like. One second. So here is the, um, the bracket that I made. I 3D printed this. I basically just measured the size of that um, mount for the thumb cam, Runcan Thumb Pro. And I put it into my um, 3D designing software. And then I just gave it a good base. And so the way to install it is I would put it on the wing, kind of press it a little bit, leave three divots, and then just remove enough foam to where this thing could then be set in there. And that's exactly how I mounted that. So I put one on each wing. I'll show you that real quick. So both wings have a, a hard mounting point for them. And then I just put some Velcro and that's where I'm gonna hold the battery. Uh, so that when it's flying, that mount can be put on either the left wing or the right wing and um, <clears throat> put a battery to power the battery right behind it. So just a small 450 milliamp hour 2S battery to power that. So that's, that's basically the way that I built it. Uh, again, I like to put this tape on the leading edges and on the trailing edges just to protect it a little bit better from hanger rash and just transporting it and moving it around. These are going to go away. These are just a couple of temporary racing stripes that I put on there so that it doesn't look so plain. Um, so that's that's the wings. Let me put those aside over here. <clears throat> so I mentioned the batteries that I'm using. So I'll put those out of the way. And there's the uh, Crossfire receiver. Now, <clears throat> for the landing gear, just a straight installation with the pieces of wood. So there's two pieces of wood, one right under that landing gear. And then there's another one inside the fuselage right in there. Hard to see. But there's the other piece of wood in there. And um, you kind of got to squeeze your hand in through there. And um, find the screws as you're putting them in from this side. Here's what the steering wheel for the nose looks like. I showed in one of my videos that you know I had installed the servo. This again is just hot glued in there. And here's the steering arm. So this model uses one of the you know three big servos. One is for the steering wheel, the other one is for the ailerons. And in one of my maiden flights uh, I did have a little bit of a harder landing and the nose metal piece bent, so I had to bend it back. But I'm thinking that that may need to be replaced at some point because it's already been bent once and then bent back. Here's the mount for the GoPro in the nose. And when I did do that hard landing, this one um, took the bump and it actually broke right there. So I put hot water on it. I helped it kind of get back to shape, kind of shaped it as, you know, pour the hot water, then give it a second just so that most of the heat is not there to burn you. And then you just kind of massage it back into shape and it kind of comes back. So that's what I did. And I just taped, I left that piece of tape there that I used to glue it back together. And I just taped the piece that retains the GoPro right in the nose like that. And this is convenient because it just goes on like this. You, you slide it in, <clears throat> find the holes and then push it back to, to lock it in place. So that's the one screw that attaches from under the nose. 
it attaches right in there. And so if you are in here and you loosen that screw, you can actually move the whole battery tray back and forth. So because of the big batteries, I basically pushed it back as far as it would go. And then when the battery is going there, I actually put them to where the strap is just outside of these zeros and that's the right location for my CG. So that's what I'm doing there. So let me put this back. Anyway, this is the way that it's set up. Just RC only. Nothing more, nothing meaning in terms of a flight controller or a GPS or anything is not in there. That's just the uh, Crossfire 8 channel PWM receiver. Um, and I'm doing that so that I can get used to the way that it handles and the way that it flies so that I know how to set it up because it has to be able to fly well so that when I put a flight controller, the flight controller can fly it. Okay, so let me go over to the, uh, to the desk and I'll show you what happened and the reason why I don't have a motor on this thing. And let me talk a little bit about that. Okay, so let's go over to the desk. Okay. So here we are at my desk, and I'm going to show you the reason why that motor is no longer installed. Here I'll bring a light. No longer installed in the back of that airplane. And it's a little hard to see, but this is kind of seized up. And if you notice, those windings in there, they're burnt. So this is what I was saying that... Um, it just doesn't seem to be the right size motor for this configuration. Over time, it overheats if you keep throttle high. So look, if you buy it from ReadyMade RC, I would recommend that you try to get them to uh, upgrade the motor. Um, otherwise, you're likely to face this. If um, you don't do that and you do get this motor, or maybe you already have this motor and you installed it or whatever, then be careful going full throttle with it. I don't think you can go more than half to three quarters throttle. Take that as your maximum. So either put some kind of throttle cap or, uh, you know, depending on an autopilot, on, on your autopilot, for example, in autopilot, you can set a maximum power. So be careful and don't exceed it because I actually did a bench test of the motor and it was pulling 30 amps. But like I said, an eCal confirmed this. Um, I'll, I'll go to the eCal and show you that after this. But basically, this burnt. So I reached out to Sunny Sky. Well, two things. I told ReadyMate RC about the issue. And they're going to make it right for me in the sense that they're going to send me another motor. But even though I told them in the email that I sent to them that I didn't think this was the right motor and that they should send me a bigger motor like this one. They insisted that they didn't have any problems, that they put it on the bench test, that they did a static test, and it wasn't pulling enough thrust. Well, I don't think they've been flying it with this setup at full throttle, because otherwise they would have found the exact same problem that I told them about. So they're going to send me a new motor, but I'm not going to put it in there again. What I'm going to do is I am going to use this. So this is at 3530, 520 kV. And I'll show you the e-calc uh, numbers for this, but basically this is a much better motor for this setup. And I already opened it, let's see, just to look at it. But basically um, you can see that there's a major difference in the size of these motors. This is the type of motor that you want. Uh, in e-calc it shows that this is never going to overheat that motor. And it is heavier, but because I was moving my batteries all the way back, I'll have to play again with the CG, but I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a much better option. So the way that this is going to install, if I'm not mistaken, is going to install like that. And then I'm going to put this, um, this hub on there, and that's what I'm going to use to fly it instead of this. This just did not do it for me. And unfortunate that... Radiometer RC support insisted that this was the right setup when now I know for a fact that it is not. They were saying, well, did you um, 
have any glue? Did you have any issues? No, there was no glue. There's no issues. This is screwed into the to the um, back of the fuselage, so there's nothing binding, right? I made sure these washers they're clear of the um, <clears throat> of the spinning parts of the motor. Absolutely no issues there. I don't know. I don't know why this burned up on me, other than it's not the right size. So this is what I'm gonna use, and and I'll <clears throat> let me um. Let me pause here. I'm gonna stop this part of the video. I'm gonna show you the e-calc just so that we can see what we're talking about. All right, all right, all right. So here we are at the PC again. So I wanted to show you real quick what I'm talking about with this motor not being the right motor for the plane. First of all, this is the page from ReadyMade RC where I bought my Anaconda. And you get to select whether you want a 6S or a 4S and whether you want a flap kit etc so this is how i got it i got the 6s combo with the flap kit and so you know for that money you expect that somebody did their homework um and they kind of did but then they didn't because <clears throat> the tech support rep told me that they bench tested it so that means nobody flew it full throttle for a few minutes and see what happened just like i did right so here's the uh, 6s setup it comes with the sunny sky 28 2500 kb brushless motor okay so needless to tell you it burned up on me right so they're gonna send they sent me a replacement one so thank you ready made rc unfortunately you still sent me the wrong one and so the reason i say it's the wrong one not only did it burn but then after the fact you know how sometimes you go and look at things you should have looked at before and you go look at them after the fact well this was one of those okay <clears throat> Many of you may not know eCalc, and maybe eCalc deserves its own video. I may do that at some point. But long story short is that this is a very um, well-established online calculator for electric setups, for planes, for multi-rotors, etc. So I'll do a separate video to talk about it more. But long story short, you come in here, you insert the, the weight of your model, the motors, information about the batteries, about the controllers, and uh, I have two pages of eCalc, one with a motor that came with my Anaconda and one with a motor that, you know, as I was doing some more research, figured out was probably a much better motor. That, by the way, ReadyMade RC also carries. So I hope that eventually they just switch out the motor that they provide with it. Now, um, this eCalc calculator has a database of motors. They happen not to have the um, 282500 kV. However, if you get the information from the manufacturer, you can enter it as a custom motor and enter that information here. So I went to the Sunny Sky website, which they have an excellent website, by the way. Here's the motor that um, ReadyMate RC supplies with the Anaconda. Uh, they're using the short shaft in the images. It's the longer shaft version. But that doesn't matter because you attach it to the other side of the motor anyway. Uh, and here's a 500 kV motor specification. And here are all of those parameters that you need to enter into eCalc. So I did that, you know, the torque, the kV, the no load current at whatever voltage. This all came from the um, Sunny Sky page. And I entered the propeller that they said, you know, that they sent me with the plane 13 by 8. APC electric, two blades, etc. So then you hit the calculate button and the little dials go spin to spin. And uh, you can see these gauges tell you, you know, pretty much the whole story. And there's another way to look at the same data. But when you look at the load, it's going to be excellent on that motor. It should give you lots of flight time. Now, if you, if you see, it's going to be providing 818 watts of power. So the max power for this motor is 1,025. So it's in the yellow zone. Uh, and here's the problem. The estimated temperature is at least 112 degrees Celsius. Well, now I know for sure it got there, right? It burned up. Thrust to weight ratio, 1.5, almost 1.5. Pitch speed, 108 kilometers per hour. And somewhere here they have the miles per hour. Uh, pitch speed, 67 miles per hour. So the plane could fly, you know, up to 67 miles per hour, which more than likely, and here they tell you more than likely on level, you're going to be flying more like 96 kilometers per hour or 60 miles per hour. So 
this is what I experienced when I flew. In other words, it had lots of power, no worries there, it took off very easily, I was able to maneuver, power through whatever, but it overheated. And here you can see the chart. They basically give you all the numbers. You can look at them in detail, but then they give you this chart here at the end, which tells the story. This green line here is the motor case temperature, basically when the motor overheats, right? And as you can see um, on the bench, I pulled about 30 amps of power and I do have a bench tester. Maybe that'll be another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, more details about ECOG, more details about testing your motor on the bench and seeing how much current it's pulling, etc. Uh, and I can do that video. For now, uh, trust me, I have pictures to prove it when I say that uh, I put my motor on the bench and I was pulling just around 30 amps, which is what this is showing, right? Um, if you can see... Well, this one doesn't show doesn't show the current other than uh, you know the amperes here, but <clears throat> long story short is before it gets to 30 amps, it starts overheating, and so I held my throttle up there for a little while because I just wanted to see how does it fly at full speed, and it must have been two three minutes. That was it. That was enough to uh, burn my motor. Now I want to show you what that chart looks like. So keep an eye on this green line here and the red after that, right? Just under 30 amps. That must be maybe. 28 and a half, 29 amps, it shows in the red, right? Now let's look at the motor that, that we should have in here. Um, by the way, the motor is going to be the um, Sunny Sky 3530, it's page two, 3530. Um, and now I'm gonna recommend, they have different KVs, but I just went with the 520 KV close to the KV of the original one. But uh, if you watch my, if, uh, you know, in the earlier part of the video, I showed the uh, motor, it's a much bigger motor. Anyway, this is the motor that I think should come with the plane. And here's why, right? I do the exact same thing. This motor does happen to be in the database, so you just select it. The rest of the page, the information on this page is the same. And then I click Calculate. Now look at this, right? Load still very good, flight time is about as good, it's actually a little less because this motor will use a little bit more power um, and it will, a little bit more current or use the battery a little bit faster. Uh, electric power is just slightly higher, but it's in the green this time, we're not in the yellow. And the temperature, look at that temperature, right? 44 degrees Celsius, cool as a cucumber, straight in the middle of the green. Thrust to weight ratio is even better and the pitch speed is even better. So I should have a much better performing airplane same propeller, same ESC, and then look at the curve, right? Here's the motor case temperature. It never overheats. And I can go as high as 60 amps and this motor is gonna stay cool as a cucumber. So if I load up the plane, if I put bigger batteries, decide to put a camera, flight controller, anything I wanna put on there pretty much, it's never gonna overheat anymore, okay? So uh, that's it. I hope you liked the video. Um, I was planning on making it only about how I built my plane, but now that we kind of got into my motor burnt, it gave me something else to focus on about um, just, you know, if you buy it, don't be shy from the plane. It should not be your first airplane because it doesn't have any dihedral. It doesn't have those things that make another plane come back to level for you. But if you're comfortable flying a plane um, by yourself and are able to correct and bring the wings back to level on your own, all that kind of good stuff. If you are maybe at your third plane level, this might be a good plane for you. Especially if you want to play with a flight controller, which we're going to do. So I'm either going to put a um, like a cube orange on it or I may put one of those Matic flight controllers. And, and my decision point between them is that the Orange is a better flight controller, but has no, OS, no OSD basically is the thing that's killing me. It has no power management and has no OSD. And the um, Matic flight controllers have power management, have OSD, have like a, a few other nice features, but they're not, they don't have the uh, redundancy of the uh, Orange. So um, I don't have, I have an Orange sitting idle, I don't have a Matek uh, just out there, so I do have one probably in another plane that I could pull out. So let me know in the comments if you want to see a build with like a Matek flight controller, or if you want to see a build with like a uh, a Cube Orange, which is a more professional build because the components are more professional, have redundancy, have um, uh, they're more expensive too. But 
Tell me if you want to see a, a build with a Cube Orange or with a Matex flight controller, right? Put it in the comments and I will build a video to show you that. All right, that's this is it. This is Flying Sandal saying, you know, don't forget to keep them up in the air. Please do me a favor. I'm trying to get more. Um, if you made it this far in the video, obviously you like this kind of stuff. And I'm trying to grow my channel. Uh, whenever I see comments, that motivates me. Whenever I see people subscribe, that motivates me. Watch my videos. If you liked it and want to talk to your friends about the Anaconda, well, maybe pass along this video, right? Who knows who's going to benefit from knowing that um, they, sh they should buy the plane because it's a really cool plane, but they should get the, uh, the right motor for it. So this is the type of information that I'm going to be sharing with you in the channel. Uh, I do a lot of RC. I thought about doing videos for a while, but I've always been kind of lazy about editing them. So I'm pushing myself a little to show you content that you might like. So please do, please do that. Go in the comments, like the video. You're going to help me out with the algorithm. And I'm going to realize that people actually watch my videos. If people don't watch them, then I might just stop doing it. It's no point, right? Maybe, maybe they're just not interesting. If, if I'm missing the target completely, let me know. I also take that, right? That feedback. If you want to see other things, you want to see drones, you want to see um, maybe uh, fixed, uh, not fixed wings, but um, flying wings. If you want to see a different video, I can kind of accommodate those things, right? What I've noticed is that there isn't um, a lot of Ardu Pilot co uh, content out there. I like Ardu Pilot. That's where this plane is going. So hopefully, um, you know, there's something that you want to see. Let me know in the comments. And okay, that's it for me. Don't forget to keep them up in the air. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.